Hello and welcome to a new series on my channel today for the very first time we're on F1 23 to start our career mode. In the past couple of games we've done driver career mode. Today I've decided for the first time since 2020 that we are going to do the my team career mode but with a twist we'll get on to that in a minute. We're going to start in the midfield because that's the kind of idea I've got in my head for the calendar. We're going to do a custom season again 16 races. We're going to start in Bahrain we then go to Baku before we then have a double header in Monaco and then we go to Spain and then Canada and then Silverstone we will go to Spa Zamvor for Max then we'll go to Monza Singapore Japan Qatar for the first time then we go to Kota Mexico Brazil and we will finish the season under the lights of the Las Vegas street circuit. So the name then of our team, I didn't want to make up my own team because that's what I found boring on F1 2020 when we first did my team and it first came out. So we are added an existing manufacturer, real manufacturer, as we create Lamborghini racing with the aim of by the end of this career mode to be fighting Ferrari. For our main sponsor we're going to go with Atlantic. For our engine we're going to be going for Mercedes because Lamborghini is actually owned by Volkswagen it was also owned by Audi so I thought it made sense for us to have a German engine in the back of the car. For our drivers ultimately for me, it was between Tyler Petrer and Enzo Fittipaldi. Fittipaldi coming with the name, of course, and in real life, he's doing all right in F2 currently. I've also put the icons in there as well. That's why you can see Jamie Chadwick there. But in the end, we did pick Fittipaldi. That is what we will start the career mode with. Unfortunately, though, I am playing on console and the game has only just come out and played started the screw mode on launch day so you, we're not going to be able to make the lamborghini logo this is the closest fit but this is the car that we will run with So there is the car then, we've gone yellow for Lamborghini. This is the first car of May that hopefully will take us to the top of Formula 1. There's a long way to go and first we have to have an interview. New year, new drivers, new team. Welcome and great to have you with us as we move far away from the paddock to the headquarters of the newest outfit on the Formula One grid. We've been granted exclusive access with an interview, not just with the team owner or the star driver, but both. Because for the first time in modern F1 history, the team owner is behind the wheel themselves. Now is a great time to bring a new team into the sport, particularly off the back of such compelling competition last year. 2022 saw huge regulation changes and it was Red Bull who came out on top in the development race. But that was last year. This year could be a very different story. Let me tell you, this facility is an absolute hive of activity and there is a palpable sense of excitement around the car they've built. Quietly, they truly believe they can challenge at the top and they've had the time now to craft a hugely competitive race car. But theory is one thing and taking on the brightest lights in motorsport is quite another. So how does the owner of F1's 11th team feel as they prepare to be thrust into the limelight of the F1 circus? New driver lineups, Qatar returns, Las Vegas debuts and the engineering race continues to push the sport and the drivers to new heights. What are they aiming for? Most excited about, most nervous for? Well, soon we will meet them to find out. Well, hi, thank you so much for having us. Great to be here. I'm gonna start with the question that everyone is asking. It's been a long time since we've seen a team owner drive their own car and a lot's changed since then. The sport has really evolved. So how are you gonna manage the responsibility of doing both roles? A 
And tell me about your teammate. They're clearly very excited to have signed with you. What do they bring to the team? So tell me about the work on the car. It's clearly a blank canvas. You've done a lot. What have you prioritized? Now, there's no getting away from the fact that your competitors have a huge amount of Formula One experience. You are a total newcomer. Tell us where you see the opportunities to make those vital performance gains. Now, ultimately, your success this season will be determined by whether you can take positions from other drivers. Where do you believe this car has the edge? And with so many disciplines and experts working so closely together here at your HQ, who gets the coveted teacher's gold star? Who are you most proud of as the first race edges ever closer? Well, I could talk to you all day. Thank you so much for your time, but I better let you get back to work. There's plenty more still to do. All the very best for your inaugural F1 season. So, this is where we're at in the R&D, and I thought I messed up here, because we now we have the fifth fastest car, and that's really not where I want it to be, but when you look at the R&D chart, you, may, you just saw it there, it's very close behind me, I'm nowhere near the top boys. We also have got another sponsor, we've gone with them, I'm not too sure how to say the name, but we've put the sponsors on the car, so this is another overview of the car, we've put all the sponsors on now, one of the reasons why I went for it on Bikini because they are yellow and since Renault became Alpine there's no longer a yellow car on the grid. I thought about doing Mini but then it would have to be green and there's already Aston Martin. I thought about bringing back Toyota but they're basically the colours of Alfa Romeo. I thought about then bringing back BMW but they're kind of the same colours as the Haas so I settled on Lamborghini in the end. We're going to go away, do qualifying, get the boring stuff out of the way, be reunited with Mark, and then we'll get racing for the very first time. No more testing, no more practice. This is the real deal, and it's make or break here at round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. There's no shortage of passing opportunities around the 3.36 miles of the Bahrain International Circuit, with the best, of course, at Turn 1, and then another soon after into Turn 4. 15 corners here, 6 to the left and 9 to the right, and we could see one or two flat spots into that tight left-hander of Turn 10. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position. And starting next to them is George Russell. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Brown, Perez, Norris, Gasly, Leclerc, Fernando Alonso, Ocon, Sainz, Verstappen, Stroll, Fittipaldi, Sonoda, Bottas, Oscar Piastri, Joe, Albon, Hulkenberg, Magnussen, Vries, Magnussen. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? A new season then, a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today as once again we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. And they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. OK, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. So, we've got all the boring stuff out the way. We're finally on the grid now. I think I had the difficulty a little bit too low. I've managed to put it third. Very unrealistic for the first race for the team. So, we've bumped it up. Right, let's get the car up to Still trying to find somewhere that is nice and a good medium for us. The AI are very strong this year. I've only done two races so far on the game before I recorded this week. Did a free lap race around um, Las Vegas and Qatar. But this is it then for us. 
We start in third. It's very unrealistic if we do go on to win this race. I don't want okay, to win this race. I'm very much expecting us to go backwards. But for the very first time then, on 2023, it's lights out and away we go. And we've got a good start, a grip from the start. So it's unbelievable. We're going to go to the inside. We're going to send it into turn one. But we've gone straight on at turn one. We've nearly dropped it. Getting back onto the track. We're back into third. It's a Mercedes 1 2, which it should always be. And as we've got Perez now behind us, and it might not be long before he is through, we go past through the S section now. Perez is all over the back of us. He's going to try to go to the outside. He's showing the door, but we've locked up and gone wide. These tyres are not up to temperature. But all these around us are on the softs as we are on the medium trying to do a one stop. And Perez is locked up and gone off the track nearly. We've gone off the track there. That corner is so hard. Look how far up the road the two Mercedes are already. Gasly now is fighting Perez up the inside. Has Gasly got the job done? This is the, the replay of the start from George Russell's point of view from second. Gets a great start, passes his teammates, and then in a minute, there we go, flying past, missed the corner. But now, towards the end of that one, there's the other green flag flying for some reason. It's up the inside, goes Paris, we try to hold it around the outside. It's inevitable, we are definitely going to go backwards. We are very much fighting for no reason, but I'm not going down without a fight. We're not giving these places away for free. As we try and fight Perez around the outside, we need to drop it on the exit. This car did not like turn one here in Bahrain. Every time, low speed corners, this car has no rear end whatsoever. As now Perez is through, and so may well be the Ferrari of Leclerc as we go through the F section but it's not yet as this is Ocon further around the lap Ocon slowing down Ocon looks to be out of the race and Alpine's reliability poor reliability continues it was always poor in our driver career mode on F122 it's carried over to this Lamborghini career mode here in Bahrain on F123 and his very first race of this career mode for rock on last a lap and a half and now wheel to wheel with Leclerc we go the clouds of Bahrain side it keeping pace with him with the overtake button it seems to be very powerful this year Max Verstappen had a poor qualifying I think they need to repeat the regulator has done the time go flying there in the background, but we are hunting Leclerc. We're going to go down the inside. We're not going down without a fight. We send it up the inside. Max gets past Leclerc, but has a massive wobble, and Leclerc goes back through. Max is lit up now as he tries to get past the Ferrari, and he ends up lighting his rear tyres up. But we are on that. We've kept them behind, but it was only going to be a matter of time. At the inside goes Leclerc into the final corner. We've gone wide. Leclerc's free. Max is alongside us. Now it's a slipstream fast all the way down towards the first corner. We're going to try and make it free wide, briefly free wide. Leclerc has last out to Max and us. We're going to send it up the inside but we've gone very deep we've gone very deep and Max holds it around the outside he goes but we keep the place and Max going back on the inside again and our double world champion as he loses it again he can't get out of turn 4 can Max Verstappen that time low he doesn't lose out to Leclerc to Leclerc and we can keep these big boys behind us for a little bit longer as we go deep there. And Max Verstappen nearly through, but he's just too far back 
to do anything. As we go off the track again, I hate that corner. And this time Max looks like with a straight line speed has overtaken us. We're still there on the outside, but we can't keep it pinned around the outside. And Max Verstappen is through. And now I can go hunting after his teammate Perez as up the inside. Tried Leclerc then on us, but the Leclerc is going into him. This is Leclerc trying to go round on our side, but it got more look like he locked up. Dallo chance for an overtake. And now the Ferraris are battling it out almost nearly. Sykes just waiting for his teammate to make a mistake, which is Leclerc, so he most definitely will at some point. He's nearly dropped it there as I say that. There's now Gasly in the only Albion remaining in this race is going to the wheel with Sainz as we play this time with the straight line speed. But we are going to take that part of this DRS. Try to go back up the inside but we take far back. And that looks to be it then between us and the line. Fortunately, the sights is on the back of us now, and we've gone wide. Sights has nearly dropped it. We've held it, we've held it around the outside as the sun begins to set in Bahrain. And now, with sights with that little mistake, he's going to be able to move Gasly up the inside of Gasly. Does go, and Gasly's past the Ferrari. The Ferrari's coming back at him now. Up the inside, the racing between the two AI, between the AI this year is unbelievable. As now, Science does regain the position. Now, this is Science who's caught the back of us back up, up the inside, into the final corner. And that is probably that. As now, Gasly is on the back of us as we go down the pit straight. We are still right on the back of Sainz, but I think we're too far back, but we're not, we're still going to go for it. To the outside at turn 1, we are going to try and pin it all the way around the outside and we get the job done on Carlos Sainz there. And I think as well, because we were behind, we have to DRS again. And we stay ahead of Sainz, we've gone well though. He's had a bit of a moment, but Sainz could have come on him for But he definitely will at some point. We are very much putting off what is definitely going to happen. We've gone right there. Sainz definitely thought about it at the inside, but waits for now. We nearly make another mistake. These mediums weren't particularly that good, but they were, they were okay. There's our Sainz. He's past us there. And it was always going to happen. I think this time it may be for good. As you can't see a thing there what's going on. But we are still fighting sides. We're not giving up without a fight. We could have gone to the outside again there. We're going to try and set him up to re overtake him. Coming out of the next corner. But that is job done for sides. He's gone now and now. It's Gasly next up as there's Alonso. Why you'd always expect the Wiley or Fox sends it all the way round the outside of us and makes us look so shaky there. As we were pinched in the middle, Gasly and Alonso. But you're not getting away with things like that, Fernando, as we try and hold it around the outside. When Alonso is free. And that is that. Now this is Joe. He is now Overtaking Lando is right behind us and got the slipstream of dreams and done me and Lando. You can see at the road, everyone's gone. Gasly and Alonso, we couldn't fight him. We're side by side down the drive, we can hold it around the outside. And it's job done. We do stay ahead. We were losing around the second lap as now Lando goes back up the inside of the Chinese driver. And got the job done, but Joe re overtook him and re overtook us, and now we're on the back. We've tried to make contact, we've nearly hit Lando Norris there, 
as we try and stay ahead of those behind. We do stay ahead of Lando. Joe's lost out again to the McLaren. As he tries again, Lando's going to try and fend him off, try and go down the inside of us. But Lando does stay ahead. As on to lap 14 now, it is time for a one and only stop of the day. From the mediums onto the hard tyres. A bar and one stop. There was the option there for two, but we're going to go backwards anyway. We were always going to go backwards, so I didn't really see much point of doing that strategy. As we just just put it out when we are almost there. And now these tyres can hopefully take us to the end. Unless there's any late safety cars or late drama about, or even a red flag as well, because they're in the game. Lando overtook us though, and then we're going back at Lando. Try and go to the outside of him as we try and keep it being on the outside of Lando. And we have a little wobble there. But Lando was through, and Lando disappeared. We're losing about a second a lap. To Lando, so I think we've put the difficulty up too much here because it is not fun. We swap Sonoda the dummy though, as he sent it into the final corner, making him look a bit stupid. But we are past the Alpha Tower, and now Joe finds his way wheel to wheel with the Alpha Tower, and he is free. Joe, we've nearly dropped it again at turn one. The car was so unsettled at low speed corners and time one at Bahrain being one of them we did struggle a lot up the inside as Joe goes wide and Sonoda through and now Sonoda's all over the back of us as Sonoda has got the job done on us unfortunately but we do have the DRS now and the DRS and the overtake button seem to be very very powerful as we go left, we go right, we go left again and into turn one we can't get the position back but we are as we cut the curb a little bit there we were doing alright for track limits till then and now there's Joe and also Fittipaldi and it is at the back there as well as Sonoda and Joe, Sonoda's got it the inside of Joe Joe got the job done on him in the end, and now Joe's on the back of us to the inside. We are harvesting some energy there, and now we're going to go to the inside. We're going to try and do what we did to Sonoda. We're going to try and swap in the dummy to the outside, though, this time. We can't do what we did to Sonoda. And Joe is at throw. And I think that may well be it for Joe. For us, we are slipped quite quickly out of the points, Albon is from absolutely nowhere, 10th in this race, I think he's still got to pit lane, he's now on the back of us, this is Sonoda, fits about his games and bases, he's on the back of us now as well, he's up the inside, into turn one goes Sonoda, we try and keep with him, we will have the DRS back to go up to his turn three, but we did manage to stick with Sonoda, the only car we could actually stick with in this race and Sonoda we tried to overtake him he keeps us behind and now we are getting closer we get closer it's gonna have to be a lunge if we go for it and that's exactly what we're going to do at the inside Sonoda's gone wide so is Fittipaldi there and lost out to Magnus and both of them and this is terrible maybe this is what they want for their A's but it's impossible to see down the pit straight what's going on as up the inside Magnuson tried to go to our outside we forced him wide and Sonoda got back up his inside but up front let's just see what's happening Lewis Hamilton dominating this race looks like he's going on for a win or he was as he's dropped it and he's gone round and George is driven straight into the front of his teammates and Perez he's done the same thing so he's for Stappen They've all just piled into the back of George Russell. He's piled into the front of his teammate. Sainz nearly drops it there. 
and goes through and it's up to third and Hamilton from the lead from very comfortable has a damage from wing and it's in very flat spot tyres now after that spin it's now Perez has damage Perez is in Lewis will come in as well he also got a penalty for that and now here is Sonoda on the back of this it's all got very dramatic in the last couple of laps of his Bahrain Grand Prix. Sonoda through, they're going to send it back up the inside of Hamilton. He's come out of the pits just behind us there. And he looks like he's going to get no points today, two laps to go. And after a, a certain win, after he beat his teammate up the inside, goes Lewis on Sonoda. Now he's wheel to wheel with us. He may be on much, much fresher tyres. But we're still not going to make it easy for him. And he can't get through us there, through the air section, as we enter sector 2. Uh, but on the third DR this time, through goes Hamilton, just like you'd expect. There was no points that's in that. But he is 11th now. And looking like no points is on to the final lap of the race we go. Sonoda is too far back. We've gone deep there, we've gone deep. Two laps to go. And Sonoda's been forcing wide and Victor Cowley's driven into the back of him. And now Bottas has found his way through. They're nearly very wide there. Going into turn four. There's also in the background Piastri and Magnussen going at it as well. We've got away. Go on Fittipaldi, have him, get him, get Sinoda, but he can't. He could have kept his foot in there a bit more. But, in a very dramatic last couple of laps, Carlos Sainz is going to win the Bahrain Grand Prix. It all crumbled at the end for Mercedes, but George will get P2 and Max Verstappen. He's going to come home to take the final podium place. And from starting P3, we went back and back and back. But in the end, it was always going to happen. We come home for P12 for our third race. OK, pick up rubber and bring it home. Faces on the pit wall then after that superb win here at Sakir. And rightly so, a brilliant effort from the whole team. Tell me, think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today. Well, this was one for an abundance of speed and skillful overtakes. Inside, outside, cutting underneath, we saw it all today. And it's really nice to see a Grand Prix won in that manner. A race to satisfy the purists today, I think. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit, familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari, do it again. It was all very, a lot of action, a lot happened in that race. Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes looking on for a certain win and a 1-2 until a big mistake at the penultimate corner spins it round. Good to still see AI mistakes as well in the game and everything just went chaos after that. Perez down as well. Max was all, all on his own. Somehow gets on the podium and in terms of the constructors for Ferrari, they are top of the constructors just ahead of Red Bull and Mercedes in terms of all of this in the development. I'm gonna just do this off camera and behind the scenes with the R&D stuff. I'll update you with what is going on as well. If they update any of the faculties then I'll show you that. R&D though, I'll do that in the background. But a very dramatic race, kick off our career mode and also a bit of a star race. Carlos Sainz winning makes it two years in a row that Carlos Sainz has won the first race of our career mode. He won the opening race on our F122 driver career mode in Australia and he's won here. 
a side little theme going on there. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you like the idea of adding an actual existing car brand into Formula One. And I like I said at the start of the video, our aim is to beat Ferrari and it all started here. But next time, we're in Baku, which is also our first sprint race of the series. But until then, hope you enjoyed the video and goodbye.